Well, it's video time again. Hold on a second here. All right. Um, I just recently acquired this. I wasn't even really looking for another counter. I just stumbled across this, and uh, I looked at the pictures, and I'm going, holy cow, that thing's in actually pretty nice shape. And what this is, it's an HP 5335A universal counter. Um, it's good up to 200 megahertz on channel A, good up to 100 megahertz on the B channel. It's got a whole lot of uh, functions that my other counter doesn't have. It, uh, it does pulse, it does slew rate, it does uh, phase comparison between a, a channel and B channel. But it has some features that it, my other counter has that this doesn't, of course, which is it's missing the C channel, it's missing the voltmeter. And up until last night, it was missing the high stability option I put high stability oscillator in it. And right now, I'm just I'm just running the thing. It's uh, I'll uh, do another frequency alignment after 24 hours. Let that uh, oscillator settle in. But it also has a whole slew of math and statistic functions that my other counter just doesn't have. And uh, it's got. It's got a whole bunch of HPIB commands and everything that I would need. Uh, this, uh, this counter came with option 40, which gives me the ability to... Uh, it's expanded HPIB command set. allows me to mess with all these buttons. I mean, every button on here I can mess via HPIB. And uh, like I said, it, I added the, uh, the, the high stability option. So it's got a whole bunch of uh, inputs on the back. It's got... Uh, it's got slope controls on the back, and you got slope controls on the front here, so I can measure pulse widths. All kinds of cool stuff. So, I'll wait 24 hours, start the video back up. I'll give you a tour of the inside and and uh, where I installed all this stuff. So, once that's done, I'll uh, we'll take over uh, again here tomorrow. All right, here we are. Ready to finish buttoning this thing up. Well, here's a look on the inside of this counter. Here's the, uh, the oven I installed. This here is the HPIB card. Got the main, uh, got the main motherboard there. The uh, channel board there. Power supply back here. And uh, all the other back panel goodies. But anyway, to get that installed, See if I can get a pointing device here. You have to remove or see here, disconnect. I can't uh, get some light here. Hold on a second. Let's see if we can make this a little bit easier. All right. It is this component. Right here. This one right here. That's the one that you got to disconnect, and it will allow you to use uh, this oven. So, uh, we'll do the uh, the final tune in there. You can see that the uh, the one sine wave is drifting. That's the oscillator. So we will get right to it. Alrighty, now I'm going to adjust. This control here, this is the course control. It's the only control I have. The, uh, this doesn't have a fine-tuned control. But we're going to try to get this trace to stand in place. So we we'll put our non-conductive screwdriver in there. And since it's moving to the left, it means it's running too fast. So we have to slow. Whoops, I turned it the wrong way. There we go. I want to try to get that trace as still as possible. Right. I've got the screwdriver in the right spot. There we go.
So that's pretty stable right there. So I'm going to let that sit for uh, about 10-15 minutes and we'll check it again. Well, that's about as good as I can get it. It's taking a good minute plus to drift. And sorry for the shaky cam, but uh, yeah, I think it's uh, good to go. So I'm going to finish buttoning it up and uh, we're going to put it in place. So yeah, successful. Well, there we go. It is all back together. Got the counter working. It is super stable and there's no drift at all. Or microscopically small amounts of it that are so small it uh, won't make a difference uh, measurement wise. But just so uh, anyone who's interested, what I'm using here is that I'm using a GPS disciplined oscillator. These are actually pretty decent oscillators. I picked this up off uh, eBay for about 150 bucks. It's just bare bones, but uh, boy, is it ever accurate. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with this thing. But to make this measurement, you take the output of your reference, running into uh, one of the channels on the scope. Um, right now I'm triggering off number two, which is the, uh, the reference oscillator. And then I take the output of the counter out back and run it into channel A, and then and make the adjustment until let's see until that sine wave quits moving and it takes a it takes a few you know a few tries to get it to, to get it right you know tweak it one way and all of a sudden it'll start drifting uh, slow and then tweak it a little bit the other direction all of a sudden it's running too fast so it's it takes some time to do it when you're only using the course control but if there was an EFC control in there it uh, would have been a whole lot easier to get that sucker on, but right now I'm running a, uh, I think it's still running. I'm testing it out with a, running an Allen deviation plot of this old HP uh, uh, signal generator. Oh, that's nice, it's a audio oscillator. And it's doing pretty good, it's uh, Got a sigma of uh, right now, it's uh, about 300 and some odd. Oops, I think I canceled it early. Oops. Yep, I bumped the keyboard. Never mind. <laughs> but at uh, 300 samples in, we were, uh, you know, 9.51 9 times 10 to the minus fifth as far as uh, stability. So, hey, that works. Well, I think this is it for this video, so enough of the shaky cam and the uh, everything else so this will uh, I guess we'll call it good for this one